What are these global warming believers who are running our power system doing to us? On the one hand, they're killing off our energy supplies, they're driving power prices through the roof, and today warning, uh-oh, gas shortages are coming as well. And on the other hand, they are destroying some of the best parts of our country to create hideous wind and solar farms that don't really work. I really don't think they know what they're doing. I'm sure that Energy Minister Chris Bowen doesn't, or the Prime Minister either. Reducing power prices by $275. But I don't even think our energy market operator, AEMO, knows what it should be doing either. Not after today. I'll tell you why. Just two years ago, the head of this AEMO, it's in charge of making sure our lights don't go off, said, great news, great news. Wind and solar power really are our future. In fact, he said, the goal that I am setting is to harness the talents, capabilities, experience and know-how across the industry to engineer electricity grids that are capable of running at 100% instantaneous penetration of renewable energy and do this by 2025. Let me translate that for you. He wanted to make sure our electricity grid, just two years from now, could run on 100% renewable energy. Not always, of course, just the peak times now and then, you know, and to figure out how to keep their system stable, like uh, coal-fired pl power plants can. Right? They're stable. Firming capacity, they call it. Because if you just rely on wind and solar, up and down, up and down, oops, you know, a cloud just went over, or boom, a big gust of wind, or the wind suddenly dropped, the system can't cope with that kind of stuff. But today, but today, what a different message from this same <laughs> Westerman. Today is no longer talking about 100% renewables, more and more wind and solar, we can do it, boom, you know. But today it was, oops, we're running desperately short of gas and in two stages. Uh, the first is that between now and 2027, while there's sufficient gas supply overall to meet demand, there's a risk of peak day shortfalls. And those shortfalls might exist when there's ultra high demand on both the power system, so gas for power system, as well as gas for heating. The second is that we're calling for investment uh, in new sources of gas supply uh, to overcome the annual shortfalls that exist from 2027 onwards. And no prizes at all for guessing which state is going to suffer first and worst. Victoria, of course. I mean, that's the state that's craziest about global warming. Uh, it's the state that's scrapped huge coal-fired power generators. It's, it's banned fracking for gas. It even for a decade banned exploring even for normal gas on land. Can you believe that? And now it's paying for this nonsense. It's about to get just half the gas it once had as existing fields run out because new ones aren't coming on in time. Gas companies like Woodside are today saying, well, they're having trouble justifying investing in Victoria again. Doesn't it want all gas projects gone? Isn't it standing in the way? In fact, why would you invest in coal or gas anywhere in this country? With the Albanese government now setting price caps and threatening to rob com companies of the gas they produce for their overseas customers and long-term contracts. In fact, the Victorian Premier made the same threat today. Our gas that comes out of our seabed and our ground should be for our businesses and our households first. What we don't need, sell that to the world. Now this idiocy, this global warming fanaticism, this is going to destroy gas exploration and a lot of other things in this country. But then, but then, just to make it worse, you look at what these global warming fanatics, Labor and Liberal, Look at what they're doing to our countryside. Now, I got an email today from a viewer who lives up in, in Queensland, Millstream. It's just uh, sort of south of Port, Port Douglas, up there somewhere. Now, he's already got a wind farm 20 kilometres from his farm. Towers 95 metres tall. Towers they built after destroying the bush. And who knows how many of the local brogers they're going to kill when they're switched on. This is what the green movement now does to our nature. But it gets worse. He tells me there's now another wind farm coming. We've got to fight global warming, don't we? And this one is going to have towers not 90 
five metres tall, but 250 metres tall with blades 90 metres long. We're talking absolutely massive things. About as big as, no, bigger than these things, but put in and around these forests. I mean, this is just absolute vandalism. Let's destroy forests to build these hideous wind farms, even though they won't actually make the slightest difference to global warming that anyone can measure. Let's save the planet by destroying nature. I mean, seriously? And here is the one figure you should take out of all this. AEMO, this energy regulator, right? Let's go wind and solar. Oops, we need more gas, you know? It says that to meet Labor's target for net zero green energy, net zero, says Labor, we're going to need nine times more of these wind farms and solar farms than we have today. Nine times. So whenever you see your wind farms, you're driving through the country, oh, look on the hills, oh, the wind farm, oh, wind towers. Imagine nine more farms around them just like that, everywhere. Wherever you see one, imagine nine more over the next... 25 years. I really don't understand how our leaders, our politicians and our activists and our regulators and our journalists could have put all of us, put you in this spot. Not enough electricity. Bills that the poor now can't afford. Hideous and useless wind farms, meanwhile, destroying your views. I tell you, haven't you had enough of this?